just in time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's sing 473. Victory in Jesus. My Savior. Phrases used in this song are so powerful, you know. He sought me even before I knew him. He sought me, and then what did he do? He bought me, you know. He paid the price and made me his child. You know. Let's sing that chorus one more time. In Jesus, my Savior. Redeeming 
being low has borders, yeah. sorters and borders. Now we are on a battle in this world you know, with the devil and all his forces. Although they are defeated, we still have to have an engagement with the enemy on a daily basis. You know. He is there, always trying to find a place and a time to catch you, you know, when you are off guard. You know. That's why we need to be always not only purposed in our hearts, but be aware what's going on. You know. Always alert, on the alert. Be sensitive like a serpent and harmless like a dove. Let's sing 485. 485. Realizing, yes. second words again. the first time I heard the song a gentleman was a wonderful singer was working as a painter I believe custodian of a church he wanted to go with me all over and sing this song even to India battle belongs to the Lord but he never made it uh, his wife is a widow he was painting going up in the ladder I think at the middle of the ladder, when he was going up, he felt something, you know. I believe he came down with the paint in his hand or paint bucket and whatever it is. And then put it down and then he fell to the floor and went to be with the Lord. Boy, what a, what a moment. I, I never forgot that. You remember the year it happened, boy. But he is with the Lord. He used to be so excited when he sang that song. It caught me like the battle belongs to the Lord. How true it is. You know? It is not our battle. You know? Whatever we battle with on a daily basis. You know? But we need to know the battle belongs to the Lord. As we do that, we know that the Lord is fighting the battle with us. Like the Lord shall fight for you. What do you do? Shut your mouth. You shall hold your peace in the sense, don't be whining and uh, complaining, but praise. You know, praise the Lord. The power of His blood is there. You know. In the name of the Lord, you know, we will do valiantly. You know. They overcame how? With the blood of the Lamb. You know. 
and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death even if it is the point of death please the voice of the martyrs they got story after story in every one of the territories where communism or socialism they are so attractive in this country but they are so unattractive in other countries they kill people and especially the targets are all christians everywhere here all the political authorities they magnify you know, socialism oh communism they don't know what they are talking about i come under socialist country in you know, india how much horrible it is you know. but praise god you know. and yet those who have come to know christ they know the battle belongs to the lord they fight it out praise the lord you know when you came inside or when you saw around the building it was clean thirsty my god garbage all around not in this side all on that side oh no on this side <laughs> on the side of the building you know everywhere so after we finished the bible study well i was thinking maybe i should i, I need to have some gloves or something we need to get the thing removed probably before sunday a lot of things were there then friday oh friday i had an appointment with bill he came at 2 o'clock then i came i saw a lady picking up all the garbage and it was no other person than jaya i said praise the lord who came and opened the building so i didn't know who it was but there was nobody she had a broom and a pickup pan and i don't know where she got the garbage bags she was picking up all of them it was beautiful so i came and opened the door building and i told bill i'll i'll come back in a minute in case you know she had to put the pocket book or something inside and so on the later i joined bill and we were having coffee then our former tenant in melissa <laughs> she came and told me pastor paul some woman is looking at the lady who's cleaning the place around she's looking into the pocket book everything was in the pocket book yesterday did you lose anything yes what did you lose uh, what is it so that's what she took you got it yes right you got it right we know who the person is oh. yes that's what i told you right away look for it you know who it is no she doesn't know melissa knows so the bank card is gone i call that we go home you call that now mark when you get i call right away cuz we can go So I'm glad I brought it to your attention my goodness that's why I told you right away you know, check everything you know you said everything is there and uh, later I went and asked uh, she was still there I ran and I asked her after I came and informed you where is your bag you know he said I, it's inside the church so I told you she some a lady was looking inside you know. I don't know whether she was looking at the garbage bag or what she obviously she was looking at your pocket book but anyhow and i asked uh, melissa but she described her exactly as tall as melissa same color and uh, that's all she knew she didn't know who it was my immediate suspicion was gladys is the only one who just for curiosity she would look so it was somebody else but praise god lord we pray for that individual oh god we release the power of the blood upon that person that lady lord and we pray that the holy ghost will go after her oh god lord you have caught many many thieves lord around this building i knew lord they got saved in the end those who threw the bottles here those who came to steal or you did steal this will be the person who did steal and you are going to catch her we thank you in jesus name amen so that is why you know even when we leave the building and uh, some some of the door is locked you know, but you have to engage it you know. in other words intact you know. shake it and see whether you know very important you know. yeah 
those who leave last that's why we always try to be the last people you know, to leave you know. sometimes you know we check both the doors you know. then is always make sure he locks the front door you know. even then someone else leaves last time and then you know the door doesn't go all the way in you know. sometimes it does that see this door same thing you know the side the both the doors you know. unless we put some iron bars and protect it like all the other places we have to probably do it you know See, so quick, you know. Yeah. When you see Melissa, I... Yeah. I will have an eye on that person, you know. Well, show me this week's message for the scam against the uh, baby formula. Yes. The scams. Oh. Who would have thought of that? I know. <laughs> There is a plot against this country, you know. There is a... How many scams during COVID? Yeah. This is... well we need to pray and uh, even yeah. pansy said yesterday she got the last baby formula you know oh. and all the stores wherever they went empty children's moot what is the children's uh, aspirin mm-hmm. motive uh, motrin right <laughs> that's also here he had to run everywhere looking for it ultimately he found one in the I target see mm-hmm. okay. like uh, travis why we should be prepared for all this no yeah we have only one baby coming to the church jeans granddaughter you know baby formula is very important if they are feeding with a baby formula but we need to pray you know, more for the babies now and i also heard uh, some of the food shortages are yet to happen in this country too no? only uh, russia has all the grains and they are trying to attack and attack this country here you know? some of the warehouses where the grains are they are all on a sudden mysteriously they are on fire you know? something is going wrong and so we know what is going wrong the devil is trying to work through all these oh, yeah. systems in the world but the battle belongs to the lord praise the lord thank you jesus all right uh, what is the next song let's sing that song three 85 near the cross three 85 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, our, our rest is beyond the river. Until then, we got to be always prepared and be ready. You know, the world is full of thieves. There are lots of good people. But there are also thieves operated by the works of Satan. They want to steal. The devil always tries to steal. The thief, Christ pointed out his name, the thief. What is his name? The thief. The thief does not come except for these three reasons. To steal, to deceive, to kill and destroy. That's his job, to deceive. The master deceiver. I have seen so many thieves in my life, in India, here, all over, everywhere, different countries, different. Why? Amazing, amazing. I remember a missionary, we had him for dinner, and he said, I like, I like the way the deceivers operate in India. <laughs> First time he, he heard, he had just, uh, got out of the taxi. You know, there are lots of cooling places on the roadside. And they make nice juice, you know, whether it's mango juice or any juice. And he saw Fanta or something. So he wanted to stop by to have a drink. So he told the taxi driver, can you wait for five minutes? I'll go and have a drink. So he went and got the drink. And he turned around, the taxi was gone, with all his passport and everything. He had nothing in his taxi that he brought. Everything. Change of clothes, money, except what he had in his wallet was there. Boy, what a turmoil he went through when he told me all about it. The thieves are, you no know, Charles Dickens is excellent in describing him. You know. Faggins Academy. They are still there. The world is like a Faggins Academy everywhere. So you got to be on the watch. People always try to get the pocketbook. Somehow. No matter where you go. Oh, we got a letter yesterday, the day before yesterday, with our house well printed and the house for sale. You want to sell your house for sale, please contact us. All scam artists. My wife tore it to pieces. They've been contacting us for the past two months. But praise God. Master thief. But God is on our side. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Cephas has gone to work. Travis, would you like to offer a word of prayer? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We're thinking about that. Take up our thoughts and our worries. Lord God, we cast our cares on you. Yes, Lord. Care for us. Lord, we thank you that you are concerned about us. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are concerned with our needs. Lord, you're concerned with little Solomon. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Step up and be prepared for the times ahead, Lord God, that we would show forth your glory and your power. Lord God, we thank you that you are God and you're the one who gives us strength and you Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you for the promise of your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Fill us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord. And drink it like water that will bring nourishment to our spirit. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And newness of life because yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
Yes. Lord, Hallelujah. And we thank you. And this is the confidence that we have in you that if we ask anything, yes, anything Lord. Lord Hallelujah. Will, you hear us. So, Lord, we ask that you would send laborers into your field, that you would give strength to those that are suffering for the gospel's sake. Lord, that you would um, give wisdom to those that are in authority over us. We thank you for those that are in authority over us, for the welfare of our city. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, one thing that we see in the world is the world is changing. You know? The systems of the world are changing. The politicians are changing. Mm -hmm. Countries are changing. You know? And we know it because the Bible says so. You know? There is one, we change too. You know? We are not what we were before. Yeah. I don't think so Hector would ever go back to what he did. You know? He was four, five years old, right? He changed. But we do know, although he was in, in, the, in the danger, God was there. Thank God the mother was there in the kitchen. Even John shared the story too, how we used to be there working or walking in some of the notorious places with hundreds of dollars in his pocket. He could have been mugged, killed. People kill for a dollar sometimes. But God is watching over us. I remember, I don't know which airport it was, London, I believe. A man right in front of me you know, was trying to mesmerize me. You know, put a spell on me right before me. You know. And I sensed something was happening to my mind. Suddenly I went to the cover of the blood and I said, Lord, I submit my spirit, soul and body at your feet. You have already redeemed me. You, know. you were redeeming love brought me to salvation. Now it is your redeeming love that has brought me here to minister to this man and he's trying to do this to take away my passport. I said, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, and that shot through him. It's like I woke up. I know what you are trying to do is not going to work with me. He got shaken, he got shaken. I am redeemed by his redeeming love. God did that and he is doing it and he will continue to do that. That's why we call Jesus the unchanging Christ. The unchanging. He will never change him. His redeeming, his redeeming love will never change him. In the Old Testament, it is called the loving kindness. The loving kindness. It embodies everything you think of. Salvation, healing, deliverance, everything. In one word, the loving kindness of God. The Hebrew word for that is chesed. I'll go into detailed descriptions about that. That's what Christ is. The unchanging Christ with his love for you and for me, always. And um, he is also unchangeable. Unchange, unchangeable. He will never change. And he is also unchallengeable. No one can challenge him. Who can challenge him? No one on the earth. So the unchangeableness or the unchangeability and also the unchallengeability. In other words, Christ is immutable. You know. He is never going to change. You know. He is always the same. He came as the king. You, know. you are a king then? Pilate asked. Him. Yes. To this end I was born. You know. And I came to witness to the truth. In other words, I wanted to bring this redeeming love and the truth of the redeeming love to this world. That is why Paul, when he got saved from Saul, he became what? Paul. There was a dramatic change in him. 
100 person he, he turned around you know they call it metanoia metanoia complete transformation you know he turned from a killer to a gospel light bearer you know? he became the bearer of the truth you know? he didn't become the truth he became the bearer of the truth you know? only christ the lord jesus is the truth you know? we are all bearers of the truth you know? we have the unchanging god unchanging the lord jesus christ in our hearts you know? and he is never going to be challenged by anyone on the earth you know? so as to succeed that immutable god you know? the most powerful god the most impregnable god you know? the word is a little bit tricky the most indefatigable god you know? most in some amount of no one can succeed him no one can defeat him the most undefeatable god who is that god the lord jesus christ and that god is in your heart in my heart that is why greater is he who is where in me than he that is in the world whether he, whether he can steal your pocket book or anything in once i lost everything you know, with my whole wallet you know, my immigration card was there you know. then i got a check you know, an empty check there you know. all the credit cards were there you know. what a three days of difficult time you know. my driver's license was there everything was there you know. and the person who took it called me you know, i'll meet you at the what is that um, the shopping place in in cumberland you know, and they, i showed up and the police officer the chief the chief of police he was there too you know, in the civilian clothes you go and give him the money he wants you know, 500 bucks you know. i didn't know 500 you know, i really about that's why i had the empty check and you know, probably couldn't cash it there was no money there you know. maximum i could give is 50 i can tell him and i can give you month by month he said even give give whatever you have cash and then we will arrest him and uh, there was somebody who came and then he went back and he never came then i went and waited and waited for an hour he never came so that's that story so the most powerful god is in our hearts although these things happen and he never got a penny out of that if he had just called me regularly like he did i could have given him probably 10 bucks you know, out of 50 bucks i had and you know, even 25 you know, for doing that great job and i had to go to the the motor office motor vehicle place to change the license go to the immigration office they gave me a new card changed all the credit cards lots of money i owed and it, you know it was one of those difficult times you know. so my our heart is purposed but my mind wasn't keen on safeguarding the wallet you know. so that's a lesson that i learned so god is always on our side but he allows us sometimes to go through some of these difficult times so that we could become very alert like a serpent you know? the serpent is always my best example of how the serpent is alert i told you about how i was holding the cobra you know? the person who killed it he said it's dead you know? because i hit it on its head several times you know? but the cobra was not dead you know? not completely dead you know? they say even if the head is cut off the cobra is still alive you know? the body still can whack you up you know? but thank god it was a baby cobra four feet or so you know? can you believe that i was holding it by its tail and i have a picture taken after a baptismal service in an area i was thinking about it whenever i see how satan is so intelligent and tries to snap you that was the little cobra baby cobra four feet huge 
that I wanted to take a nice picture of it. So I put it on a rock. And everybody was watching. The kids were there. The baptismal crew was there. The baptized young lady was there. Everybody was there. And the man who caught the cobra, he was also there. Because I wanted to take a picture with him. And the more of, I had the picture taken with the cobra and all that. There was another Canadian missionary was there. He was, I was trying to teach him how to work with the Indians and so on. Everything was there. Suddenly the cobra flew right in front of me. You know, while I had the camera, you know, suddenly I made a turn, complete turn around. You know, the cobra went about 15 feet you know, or 20 feet distance you know, with that power. You know. And he told me, you know, they can strike you 80 to 90 miles an hour. That was the power of the cobra. But you said it's dead. You know. I don't know, this I never knew. Because you put it on the rock, the cobra resuscitated, resuscitated itself. Became strong, super strong. I'm going to get him. So he, he now he really took a rock and hit it on its head and he put it around his neck and he walked away. Amazing. That's why Jesus said, be sensitive like a snake. It knows you. He knows you and ready to strike at you any moment. Be careful. So we are in this world of snakes. Like John the Baptist said, you vipers. <laughs> Who told you to re repent and turn from the wrath is yet to come? You know? John was always ready to whom he could say that not everybody is a viper. There are a lot of good people, good and bad morally righteous people, but the Bible calls all our sinners condemned, dead, and guilty until they come to terms with Christ and they are reconciled to God. They do not know the redeeming love, the chesed, the loving kindness of God. And his loving kindness is everlasting. Jesus happened to save me and his rescue effort is still happening and it will always continue to happen. You know. He did it, he's doing it and he will do it. You know. Always. You can count on that. All that God expects us is to be ready. You know, to give this redeeming love to people. You know. And that one unchangeable man in that aspiration was Apostle Paul. That's why if you turn to the gospel, not the gospel, the, book, the epistle to Romans, first chapter, Paul was always ready. I am ready. For what? To preach the gospel. I am ready. Look at this. We'll read first chapter 14, 15, and 16. Or 17. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready for what? To preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also, you know. He is uh, he's ready to, getting ready to come to Rome, to speak to the saints in Rome, to the church in Rome. For, very important word, you know, because of this one thing, you know. What is this one thing? I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. For what? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? Why is it that Apostle Paul is not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Number one, for it is the power of God. The gospel of Christ is all that God is and all that his power is. You know. For what? For salvation for everyone. You know. Everybody can be saved. You know. Who believes? For the Jew first and also for the Greek. What it means, the gospel of Christ was meant for the Jewish people. You know. And from there to the ends of the earth. You know. 
to the Greeks, to the barbarians, and all kinds of people. For, Paul is using this for many times. Already we saw that one, two, three, four. For in the righteousness of God, in it the righteousness of God is revealed. We see in it the disclosure, the revelation of God's righteousness. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So people have their own faith. You know? Oh, I have my faith. As long as I have my faith, I'm all set. You know? But that faith is not going to help. You, know? to, you have to go to another faith. You know? What is that faith? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. There is a beginning, there is a continuity, and there is a culmination of that continuity. You come to terms with Christ by faith. You get saved by faith. You are sustained by faith. And you are going to succeed by faith. That's what the prophet saw Habakkuk, I believe, second chapter, fourth scripture. He saw the same thing, the just shall live by faith. Sola fide, they call it. Martin Luther saw that. You know. The just shall live by faith. You are justified by faith and become righteous in the sight of God. Abraham lived by faith. He saw the Messiah coming. You know. All the Old Testament prophecies all based on that one single most faith. What is the faith? The faith of the Lord God Jesus coming to save the world because of his redeeming love. Like the psalmist talks about in Psalm 110, I believe. Psalm 110. Thy loving kindness is from forever lasting. So the, in the Old Testament, God always revealed himself with that idea of the God of the loving kindness. His loving kindness for the people of Israel never changed, never will be. Although they have rejected him and they were instrumental through them putting Christ on the cross, God himself is instrumental for putting himself on the cross. Christ came voluntarily you know, to offer himself to the for the salvation of the entire mankind to be put on the cross. So Christ offered himself. He came on his own accord. No other person on the earth is certified and willing to die for the entire humanity. And that one person being the Lord God Jesus himself. And that is the good news. That is the message. That is the evangelion. The good news of the gospel. God loves you. God is love. And his character is love. The loving kindness. Chesed. The Old Testament always predicts. And the word is used in so many beautiful ways. Ultimately, it symbolizes in another word called shalom. They are both interchangeable to me because it typifies the loving kindness of God. Peace consists of the loving kindness of God. The loving kindness also of God characteristically consists of the peace of God. So when you are saved, when you are justified, you also have the peace of God. Peace with God. Paul will talk about it later on. So let us now concentrate, concentrate on the unchangeable, the unchanging, and the unchallengeable loving kindness of God. Unchangeable. It's going to never change. You know. He loved them to the end. You know. In other words, Christ offers his loving kindness to you and me only on one term, one day? No. 
There is no termination for that. It is unchanging. And unchallengeable. No one can challenge that. Because they have to take Christ out of your picture. Unless you do like Judas. Betray him and join the devil. Then there is another story. Now let us go to Isaiah talks about it, 61st chapter. The Bible talks about the favorable year of the Lord in terms of salvation. Let's go to uh, Psalm 136. Psalm 136. And that typifies or tells about everything you need to know about the loving kindness of God. The character of God. The character of God consisting of the loving kindness of God. 136. It is a beautiful psalm. If, what is lo loving kindness of God? If, the, if you have a question, this is the answer. The loving kindness of God. 136. You know. Oh, it's, it has about 26 scriptures. You know. The loving kindness of God is marked here. Stated here how many times? 26 times. So remember this number, 136, 26 times God's loving kindness. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. You know, for his mercy endures forever, eternity. Oh, Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy endures forever. To him alone does great wonders for his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens. Because of his loving kindness and mercy, they are all interchangeable. Peace and love. God created the heavens and the earth. To him who laid out the earth above the waters. For his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights. For his mercy endures forever. As the creator of the universe. The galaxies. The stars. The moon. And everything you think of. The sun to rule by day. Without the sun. There is no light. For the daytime. For his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars. To rule by night. For his mercy Endures forever. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn. For his mercy endures forever. The Lord wanted to deliver people out of where? Egypt. His people are his people. So the Lord had to do all that he had to do. If you want to know more of it. Watch the Ten Commandments. Everything. You know. To him who struck Egypt. Number 11. And brought out Israel from among them. For his mercy endures forever. God's loving kindness. God's mercy. God's love. Hope for the mankind. Our human race. Endures forever. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm. God brought them out. For his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the sea in two. For his mercy endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it. Only the God of Israel could do that. For his mercy endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. See, here is an example. A lot of archaeologists even go to the point saying that the water was only about two to three feet deep. You know, the Red Sea. Can you believe that? Then it's a greater miracle. Someone said, you know, if the three feet of water could drown a bigger chariot where these soldiers were going across. So that is a greater miracle. They tried to overthrow everything about the Bible and the Bible itself using all the scientific scientisms. You know. Real science won't do that. But the scientism does that. That's why scientists, greatest scientists like Isaac Newton and so many others, 
they all believed in the bible to him who led his people through the wilderness not only that he brings you out of slavery of sin he continues to defeat the enemies and god becomes the guidance he guides you know for his mercy endures forever life is a life of wilderness no? but god has promised what he will guide you through it to him struck struck down great kings no? he may face a great king no? so what for his mercy endures forever and slew famous kings for his mercy endures forever no? shihon king of the amorites for his mercy endures forever whoever it is no? and og king of basham and his mercy endures forever and gave their land as a heritage god gives you a place to live a land to make is a prosperous land so that you can live off of it but in the modern world god gives a nice job a wonderful career he can also give you a land and a house too your heritage to israel is servant for his mercy endures forever anything that comes from god god knows what is the best for you at this present time and then continue to lead you there ultimately how much does a man require tolstoy leo tolstoy one of the greatest russian writers he wrote how much does a man need ultimately what he needed was a 6 foot grave that's all the land he needed beautiful story who remembered us in our lowly state when nobody looked upon us god in our humiliation looked at us for his mercy endures forever and rescued us from what from our enemies for his mercy endures forever who gives food to all flesh for his mercy endures forever as soon as the sun began to blossom full force all the birds started singing so loud and two days in a row you know you can hear the birds everywhere you know. yeah. oh give thanks to the god of heaven for his mercy endures forever wow god's mercy and his loving kindness has said endures forever so i wrote the loving kindness is a masculine masculine love noun you know, consisting of mercy goodness faithfulness love acts of kindness kindness itself loving kindness that is that word that has said consists of but it's also looked at it this way it's an aspect of several aspects are the features of god's character god will never change his character characteristics so one of the characteristics of god is hesed but on the other ones god is a god of truth god is a god of faithfulness god is a god of mercy god is a god of steadfastness he is a god of justice he is the he is the god of righteousness and also he is a good god that's why if you are a follower of christ you will never say god is a bad god god is a good god that's what they try to strike you know god is not a good god look at all the violence the killing and so on where is that god that's another sermon i'll preach another time so his kindness and love uh, love are everlasting you know? we saw the very first beginning first there are his loving kindness and all his characteristics are actually the foundation based on which god's everlasting love is so the characteristics of god is the character of god is based on all that i have just mentioned you know number 1 goodness number 2 and 3 beside the verses unchanged and unchallenged as god and the lord that's the second scripture second and third we already saw that 4 to 9 basis for his creative wonders he created the world 10 to 
He's the God of deliverance. He brought people out. And then what did he do? Seen with the exodus from Egypt. Ten commandments. He saw that. The Red Sea. Caught it into two. Redemption from Pharaoh himself and all the other kings. 16th scripture talks about he guided them. Deliverance. Gave them the gift of land. 17 to 22. To defeat his enemies. And gave them land. 23 to 25. He guided them in the past. He continues to guide them in the present. In the present. And he will continue to do in the future. 26. He is the sovereign ruler in the world. Praise the Lord. He is the sovereign ruler in the world. So this is a beautiful psalm. Whenever you talk to people. Be ready. That's what Apostle Paul is saying. I am ready to preach the gospel. Because it's the power of God when you talk to people from the basis of Psalm 136. You can say that God can deliver. He can do anything. So his creative wonder, his redemption, so redemption, prevention, and the permanent establishment of what Jesus himself said is the church. God's he established it. I would put it this way. God redeems you. No? Redemption. No? Then he releases you. No? We are released people. No? That's why Luke 14. Jesus went to the synagogue in Nazareth. He took the scroll no? and opened it and found the passage. No? The spirit of the Lord is upon me. No? Wow. All eyes were upon him. For he has anointed me. For what? To preach the gospel to the poor. And then you know it talks about all the rest of it. To release them. To give them the favorable year of the Lord. It's a beautiful scripture. I want you to memorize it when you get a chance. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. To give eyes sight to those who are blind to preach the acceptable year of the Lord the year of jubilee, the favorable year so to put it all in a nutshell it's called the God's covenantal love the loving kindness of God our mercy, all of them God's covenant, he made a covenant that's why I emphasize this always at the, at the communion, the Lord's table it's a contract God made with you and with me. We belong to him and he belongs to us. We are his priceless procession. Procession. He did die for me. He did redeem me. He does keep redeeming me. Rescuing me. Releasing me. He will continue to redeem, release and continue to revive me. The psalmist to pray, you know, 119, Psalm 119. Lord, it will revive me according to your loving kindness. You know, according to your word, according to your loving kindness. And it is forever. Psalm 103, you know, 109, Jeremiah 33. Lots of scriptures. I, um, Psalm 51, 86, all that. So God's loving kindness is always in abundance. It's not just a little bit. God's loving kindness is not a bag full. It's a lot of kindness. So the covenant keeping God is going to demonstrate his loving kindness not only now like he did in the past but forever. Oh Lord. Beyond this age and Always. You know. The covenant keeping God expects his people. You know. Now the real story. What is it? He expects his covenant love to be demonstrated in our lives. You know, so that we in turn love God and love people and become ready to preach the gospel of Christ. Because it is the power of God.
for everybody who believes now we believe no? god has given us the grace to believe no? so we are justified by faith we live by faith no? and it is the same faith that people need no? every other faith is okay no? it is all subjected it is secondary no? it's going nowhere no? as far as salvation is concerned no? what is the one faith you need no? the faith in the lord jesus christ because he is the only one who demonstrated his loving kindness and tender mercies where on the cross and because the message of the cross is foolishness to those who perish but for us it is the power of god because god's power is demonstrated not only in the past it is being demonstrated now and it will always be blessed be the name that is why we love god we love people and so on and so forth there is a hymn you know hymn number 69 we will sing maybe next week thy loving kindness is better than life thy loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise thee yes my our lips can only praise god keep on praising him hymn number 69 another day you know, based on psalm 63 and you know, thy loving kindness god's loving kindness has said it better than this life itself better than me better than my life my own life on this planet here you know, better than everything else you could think of even the psalmist says better than the fine gold refined purest gold there is nothing like god's hesed god's loving kindness greater than fine gold there is that is one of the most precious metals the priceless pearl anything you think of the most priceless pearl I saw a movie yesterday not a movie it was just a documentary of a castle good wood close to 10 15000 acres of land and it was a kind of a mansion of lord mark or something march lord march of england he was a duke so this has been going on for 300 years down to the last one who was there interviewed by this lady number one baker and a cook and there they showed a special place you know. it was all built by uh, what is it the sea shells you know. oh very 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 look sea shells you know. it's all in a beautiful art you know. beautiful art like the art you see on on the walls uh, on next door you know. einstein center on the back on the wall you know. the lady was painting it hector ran into her Travis ran into her. The late, my wife and, we, we, and I went there. Gave her the gospel. And she knows all about this. And I told her the good news. Praise God for it. It was beautiful. The gospel of salvation is there. And she was still in the ladder when I was giving the gospel to her. And I put the track, go and read it and get saved. And at the Dunkin' Donut... this jacob not jacob jeremiah he came on the scene you know hey listen to uh, bill's testimony how the loving kindness of god is demonstrated in his life like so many other testimonies now the i, I mentioned uh, hector too you know? and suddenly his brother from texas was on the phone you know jeremiah's brother then he introduced me to him you know he told me about austin texas you know Oh, he's from Austin, Texas. So I told him the story of an Indian chief who got saved in, in, in Texas. I gave him a story. I was able to come over there because of my own story, and I gave it to him. Oh, it was a wonderful time God gave him. So we should be always ready, whether to minister on the phone to Texas in Austin, or another time a lady came to Christ, Linda, on the phone at Texas. 
cloud, same cloud I believe in Florida. So we should be always ready. You know. The preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those who perish. But for us, what is it? It is the power of God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And then sing a hymn. Lord, we thank you for the preparation in our hearts, O oh God. To be purposed in our hearts. To, prepare, to be prepared with the message, O oh God. The gospel of salvation, O oh Lord. The gospel of Christ is the gospel of salvation. The gospel of mercy, loving kindness, peace. The gospel of your steadfastness, O oh God. The gospel of your goodness. The gospel of your justice, O oh God. O oh Lord, we are justified by your faith, O oh God. The gospel of faith based on your justification, Lord. You justified us on the cross. The faith justified us, faith in you. That justified Mardi Luther through that scripture, O oh God. The faith, O oh God, we are justified by faith. The just shall live by faith. That got him, O oh God. You saved him. And the gospel became available to the world through the printing press and all that, O oh God. That one scripture did it, O oh God, in his life. And then later on, through several others, O oh God. And people are murdered because of that justification by faith in you. And that only and nothing else. If you are listening to this gospel of salvation, proclaimed, demonstrated on the cross by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You need to accept this loving kindness, chesed, the love of God, shed, abo shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit given to us. If the Holy Ghost is prompting your heart, open your heart and receive Christ with repentance that you could be redeemed by the power of God. Lord Jesus, anyone listening, Lord, save that individual who doesn't know you. Heal and deliver that person because you included healing and deliverance in salvation, O oh God. The release, the redemption, and revive that individual who is a lukewarm, O oh God. I don't care. I'm not ready for that. Lord, we ought to be ready like Paul, like you. Even at the moment of death, you talk to the thief on the cross, O oh God. Help us to be ready always to share your loving kindness. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing the last hymn. 554. Five hundred and fifty-four. Let's take it and read it. Sing it. Forty-four, fifty-four. I'll fly away. Why? One of these days we are going to fly away. We are not going to be here. So let us be ready to give the gospel until we fly away. Five hundred and fifty-four. Ah. Uh -huh. 
I used to be singing this song always in the 70s and I'll fly away. All my friends, believers and others whom I led to Christ, we were all singing that song. That was my very important song, I'll fly away. Kept on singing it. Later on, everybody started saying, what happened to Paul Lawrence? He flew away. <laughs> Where did he fly away? He flew away to New York. 1990, that was the joke there. When I went back and ministered there, they introduced me to lots of people. He, remember, he used to be singing, fly away. And then he flew away to New York. Now he's here. He never changed. He has the same gospel. He's ready to preach. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we ask for your blessings upon the offerings and the tithes, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of your people in taking care of this gospel work right here at Mount Pleasant. And we do thank you, Lord, for everything that is given in the offering plate. We give ourselves to you, Lord, like the little boy who put himself on the offering plate. Oh, Lord, we thank you and praise you. May your peace and your power and your presence uphold us and continue to uphold us. Yes, it will. In Jesus' precious name we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's fly down to the Baraka Chapel.